thank you, um, Mika and Andrew, for inviting us to, to speak here this morning. And thanks to you all for being a, a wonderful audience. Um, an engaged electorate is the bedrock of accountable government. Now, in the United States, our electoral systems are out of sync with the demands of 21st century citizens. The mechanics of American democracy are due for a modernization. But there are tons of local innovations happening all across the country. And we want to start off this morning by talking to you about three of them. This is Wendy Noren, and she is a serial innovator. In 1978, when she was 24 years old, Wendy was hired as the director of elections in Boone County, Missouri. She said, I made more money as a waitress at Harpo's Bar in college. She said that it took her about a year to figure out how the office worked, including the IBM punch card system that they were using to maintain the voter roll. In 1980, the presidential elections rolled around, Wendy's first. She was excited. She says the office got slammed. There were way more people who wanted to register to vote than they had the capacity to address. They says, she said that they never recovered from all of those people desiring to register. So when the dust settled, she realized that she needed to do something to fix this problem. So she taught herself the now ancient programming language COBOL and coded the tools she knew that she needed in order to serve her voters best. And she's been innovating since then. Um, most recently, uh, Wendy introduced a fleet of e-poll books, soon to be on iPads, at polling locations across her county so that voters who had arrived at the wrong polling location could be redirected quickly and in real time. This is Travis County, Texas, where voters can vote wherever they want, and they're given the information to do so. Travis County has a vote center model, which means that voters can go to any polling location of their choosing in the county in the early voting period before Election Day. Um, now, in Travis County, uh, for the first time this year, voters will be able to go online um, to see how long the lines are at each of their different polling locations so that they can choose um, which of them is most convenient for their schedule. Now, for Travis County, on the back end, what this means is that poll workers will have to respond to a pop-up on their computer screens saying exactly how many people are waiting in line and transmit that information in real time to HQ so they can put it up on the web for everybody to see. It also means for them that they're going to have to do a bit of retraining with their poll workers, whose average age is north of 60, um, which means that they're willing to retrain folks who are not necessarily uh, attuned to technology in service of sort of greater voter self-service, helping the voters help themselves. And finally, this is Jefferson County, Kentucky, a two-in-one system that their tuck team built in-house to solve a problem. So in Kentucky, as with all other states in the nation, uh, local jurisdictions are required to upload information about the voter roll into a state database. Now, they often also maintain a local database for themselves to manage data, to run reports, um, and for the sake of security in case the state system goes down, which sometimes it does. So this two-in-one system was built so that the data entry clerks could enter information one time, and it would be automatically populated in both the local system and the state system. The bad news is, is that that two-in-one system acts as a user on the state interface. And whenever the state interface changes, the system breaks. So these technical problems are typical across the country. Um, you know, these are technical systems that these offices are using uh, to maintain voter information, and they're simply uh, customized completely to local needs and frankly sort of unsustainable over the long term. Um, and that's just on the back end. For voters, knowing when to vote and where to vote and how to vote is very often a test of jumping through bureaucratic hoops. So we all know what the problems are. We understand the impacts of this outdated technology on our elections. They're well publicized in the national media. But the thing is, nobody has yet built a solution for that problem. We have to fix that. But don't worry. We're on it. So by introduction, I'm Katie Peters. And I'm Kate Crentieris. And 
three years ago, my friend Seth Flaxman and I, whoa, apologies, set out to ask how we could bring the power of the internet to the process of voting. We built TurboVote, a site where you can sign up and we'll track your elections and provide you with all of the information and materials you need to vote in every election for the rest of your life. As we've worked to grow and expand and reach more voters, we realized we needed to work directly with government. And so we set out to know who runs elections, what are their processes, and how can we bring new technologies to bear to help them reach their voters. And our work at Reboot focuses um, on helping institutions acting in the public interest to be more responsive to the communities that they serve. So we design and implement systems that help individuals and institutions work together to deliver better governance. We like to think of that as uh, working toward a 21st century social contract. So to reimagine the future of elections, we had to get local. For all of the talk about what is and is not coming out of Washington, um, the reality is that elections are an entirely local affair. Each of the more than 8,000 different local elections jurisdictions has its own systems and processes that determine the voter experience locally. We travel to a subset of six of these places to get a sense of how it works. Um, from Brattleboro, Vermont to Travis County, Texas, we talked with dozens and dozens of elections administrators, good governance people, campaigners, party hacks, and even a few voters. We watched elections officials register people for the first time and process absentee ballot requests. We asked them to show us their warehouses where they keep the voting technology that powers elections. Um, we sat with them while they entered information into their technical systems and talked a little bit about how procurement works. Um, and we sort of examined the landscape of elections reform at coffee shops with state legislators and campaigners. And here's what we found. There is a critical mass of creative, inventive people who are already experimenting in making their processes work better for voters. These are people who are motivated by a desire to serve the voters, to uphold the law. They're interested in sharing their own innovations with their peers, and they're willing to embrace legal ambiguity when they think it will result in something that is more voter-centric. As is to be expected, given recent history, they're also deeply fearful of public scrutiny of poor performance. But those of them that have been most innovative have been able to channel that fear into optimizing their operations. These are individuals who have deep local knowledge about the communities that they serve, often going back decades, and we found them to be people who were really in it for the voter. And they're running tools that our state of the art for 1996. <laughs> These folks know what they need. They've gone out and they got it built. And now they're able to do little more than maintain it. They don't have the budgets for significant regular improvements. They don't have the data standards to collaborate across jurisdictions and build tools that could benefit multiple offices. And they, there's a dearth of technologists available in-house to build the kind of technological leaps needed to provide significant improvements in voter experience. Calling on the geeks. Seriously though, there's actually strong precedent for collaboration between talented technologists and local government. We've seen what the Sunlight Foundation is doing for local transparency. We know what Code for America is working on with service delivery. And we have seen Google Politics and the Voting Information Project do exactly this with polling place information and elections officials. So our problem is that we have the talent, but we lack the time. If we don't start now, 2016 will feature the same lines, the same confusion, and the same problems as we already know so well. Elections are run on a boom and bust cycle, from zero served to millions in a single day. So we were able this spring to visit and learn from these officials while the lessons of last November were fresh in mind. 
will get to return this summer and draw on their expertise as during, during the lull between local and primary races. We'll be able to have them prototype test tools next spring in municipal competitions and, and primary elections and scale through the November midterms. But that means that the time for redefining the future of American elections is today. So what is that future? It's that voting should fit the way we live. It's a system that pre-registers every 16 and 17 year old when they get their first driver's license, or it catches them as they arrive on campus and sign up for their first college classes. It is a system that finds voters where they are, registers them once, and provides them with timely reminders, accessible information on where and how to vote, and keeps them engaged and registered as they move, as they change parties, and as they cast ballots in races from the school board to the presidential. And it's really not that revolutionary of a future. I'm from Boone County, Missouri. When I turned 18, I registered with Wendy Noren as my clerk. And among her other innovations, Wendy's built a system of email notifications that include your polling place, a list of the races, and a link to request an absentee ballot. And so I moved away for college. I actually even left the country. And I still rarely missed an election. In fact, when Seth first pitched me on the idea that's become TurboVote, my response was, but I already have all of that. Doesn't everybody? And the answer is not yet. But there's some pretty great clerks out there running elections. And I know many a talented technologist. I'm fortunate enough to work with several. And by putting them together and collaborating on this vision, we can reimagine and rebuild a future for American elections that is seamless, accessible, and completely in sync with the needs of 21st century citizens. Thank you. Thanks.